Dear God, our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. We ask for your presence in unsettling times with ambiguity and uncertainty, unravelment all around us. We need to know, God, that you are here with us. God, you promise to never leave nor forsake us. And in this hour of need, we pray, God, that people's hearts and minds will be open to whatever you divinely impart unto us. Let us receive a word from you today. God, as we all stand here to address the atrocities that have transpired in our society that has diversely and have negatively affected the minority community, we pray you would give us the wisdom to address it in a manner that will be impactful and beneficial to all who are a part of this community. We also pray, God, that those who are not of this persuasion will open their hearts, their minds, and spirits and understand the plight that we find ourselves in. God, we don't look for anyone to have pity on us, yeah. but just enough empathy to understand that we are caught in the midst of a systemic issue yeah. that continues to dog the minority generation. God, in the name of Jesus, bless us now. Let your will be paramount and our words be effective. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. Amen. The other night, I sat for more than an hour watching the film of Mr. Floyd being arrested and actually being murdered by a police officer. I have spent the better part of my life in the civil rights movement from the marches with Dr. King, bombing of the church in Alabama, and I've seen violence over and over again. However, that watching of that the other night has probably moved me more than anything I've seen in the last 20 years. I saw a police officer sworn to uphold the law to protect and serve, literally put his knee on the neck of an unarmed black man who was already subdued and hold his knee there until his last breath almost was taken. And I felt something inside that said we're better than that. We're better than that as a nation and hopefully better than that as a police department. So I'm gonna read this to you and then I'm gonna give the clergy an opportunity to speak and then the elected officials that are here will also speak for just a moment or so. So this is the pastors, ministers, elected officials, clergy of Tulsa, Oklahoma regarding the murder of George Floyd. We, the preachers, elected officials, are here to express our dismay, anger, and our frustration in regards to the death of George Floyd, who died at the hands of a Minneapolis police officer. For six minutes, the officer slowly drained the life out of an armed, handcuffed, compliant black male. We are dismayed at the officer's who participated in the killing of the man. We therefore are asking that these officers be brought to justice and face the full penalty of the law for the unlawful murder of Mr. George Floyd. Let it be known that we are believers in law enforcement. We believe that police department is necessary for the protection of our citizens. But we decry the abuse of power and the use of deadly force that is disproportionately used in the lives of African American men and women. We therefore stand in unison asking for justice for George Floyd on this day. There are several officials that are here that are going to echo some of the same sentiments. We're going to start with our preachers. They will introduce themselves as they come forward, along with those who are elected officials. We're going to ask them to come. Uh, Anthony Scott, uh, Senior Pastor, First Baptist Church, North Tulsa. Uh, as a community leader and a pastor, uh, my heart is uh, certainly and definitely grieved, uh, not just with the incident with uh, Mr. Floyd, uh, but even going back to Mr. Arbery in Georgia. Uh, even on today, this morning, uh, there was a gentleman, uh, University of Connecticut student, uh, who had killed two persons, had kidnapped an individual, had stolen two vehicles, and he was apprehended without incident. The fact that he had done all of that and was apprehended without incident indicates that his life mattered to somebody. Uh, Mr. Floyd 
was not apprehended without incident, he lost his life. And that's what we want to bring attention to. It's not that law enforcement doesn't have a job to do, but in some situations, particularly when it comes to African American males, they are not apprehended without incident. They are losing their lives. Yeah. As a pastor and as a community leader, this grieves and saddens my heart. Uh, I am the father of two 20-something-year-old young men. I have a three-year-old grandson. I would have never imagined that I would have to teach mm -hmm. and train them to be careful in 2020 yeah. like my dad had to be careful in the 1940s and the 1950s. We simply want to draw attention to something that simply has to stop. Yeah. A pastor young men, and again, this certainly grieves my heart, but we have to teach and train our young men yeah. in 2020 like it's 1940 and 1950. And we simply say this has to stop, it has to end. These young men's lives mean something to their families, and they have to mean something to this nation and to this country. Thank you. I'm Dr. Goss of the Morning Star Baptist Church, and I find myself again hurting. Uh, woke up to find the news that once again, another black life didn't matter. Mm -hmm. I discovered that the scab that we think is healing was peeled back again. Visions of Terrence Crutcher, Philando Castile, Trayvon Martin, and the long list of unfortunate victims of police brutality came to the forefront of my spirit, causing me to be afraid for my own children, my own sons and daughters. Once again, we find a police officer who wrongly executed his office to the death of Floyd, Brother Floyd, and now is still walking around waiting for some, rather it's a sentence or an acquittal. I don't know what's going on because he haven't been charged. And it's discouraging that he has not even been charged to this point when we have blatant evidence like we did in the case of Terrence Crutcher that there was no reason for the force that was used. I believe that every police sergeant, chief, captain should be aligned in one platform and denouncing the use of this force. Mm -hmm. Everyone mm -hmm. should stand strong and say loud and clear that this is unacceptable and it should not and will never happen on their watches. I'm appalled at the silence of some of our politicians on various sides of the aisle. I'm appalled at the silence of the powers that be. Mm -hmm. I'm just appalled at the way that this continues to play out over and over again. People have reached their limits and it's boiling over. The unfortunate incident on last night troubles me even more in Minneapolis because now we have taken the focus off of what the real issue is. Now we have looting and things of that nature. We have to know how to be aggressive but we have to be controlled in our aggression mm -hmm. and try to do some things to not appease people, but demand change. I hope that this time people will come together and realize that just another meeting, just another press conference is not the period that ends this sentence. But we need to promote and move to a whole nother level of strategic planning to assure that this does not continue. We matter and we have to use our strengths in order to get folks attention. I hope we can come together and make some real changes. Thank you. <coughs> Senator Kevin Matthews is here. As we have come up. I am Oklahoma State Senator Kevin Matthews. And as we look at the black lives lost in the streets of our communities that I work to address every day with mentoring efforts and efforts to help stop that violence. It happens when violence is displayed as the method of resolution for so many in this country and our society. But those that are paid, sworn, and paid by us to protect and serve should not be supported and allowed to be afraid to do so. It does not take courage 
to be an armed person shooting an unarmed person or shooting an unarmed person walking away or to continually apply undue force or use a weapon on a person already subdued by handcuffs and on the ground. I am outraged that this type of behavior continues to be an issue anywhere in our country. And as a father of two black males and the grandfather of a black male that has lived in four states in this United States, I'm concerned for their safety, not only from those that might harm them in the streets, but those that fear them even when they are not armed. I must speak out about not only what happened with George Floyd's death by officers, because I represent this community. But for black people across the country, we are outraged. And we're outraged for those things that have happened to not only the Floyd family, but families standing here even with us. For what has happened to me and my family members. And so I think that while we have serious conversations with our administration here about these things in our community, we must stand up and we must not accept what happened to the Floyd family and what continues to happen to black people across this country. Before we get to another elected officials, we have Dr. Tiffany Crutcher, whose brother was killed here by police. We're going to ask her if she wants to come now and give us uh, a message. Here we are yet again, mm -hmm. angered and devastated at the killing of another unarmed black man by law enforcement. The compounded trauma that my family, that our community, that we endure is real. So I will continue to honor the victims of police brutality, now George Floyd, mm -hmm. for still dealing with Ahmaud Aubrey, mm -hmm. Breonna Taylor. Yes. I will honor their lives by continuing to fight for racist policies and practices by law enforcement. Change requires changing. Nothing will change until racist policies and practices that give police officers the authority to commit legal murder are changed. Mm -hmm. So I will continue to fight here locally, I will continue to fight at the state level, and I will continue to take this fight to Capitol Hill as I've done over the last few years. And it's going to take all of us becoming outraged. We have to stop making decisions daily as to who deserves our outrage. Mm -hmm. Terrence Crutcher still deserves your outrage. Mm -hmm. Breonna Taylor deserves your outrage. Mm -hmm. George Floyd deserves your outrage. Ahmaud Aubrey deserves your outrage. So let's come together and demand better from our city officials, our mayor, our police department. They have to speak up. I need the good cops. I'm calling on the good cops to speak up and speak out and weed out the bad apples. We took an oath to serve and protect. And as citizens of this city, as citizens of this state, and citizens of this nation, we're going to make sure that you stay true to that oath that you swore before God, too. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sister Janetta Marshall is a school board. She works with our children. Uh, and I'm going to ask her to come now. Janetta Marshall, School Board, District 3, Tulsa Public Schools. Every year, as a nation, 
we celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. King. One day out of the year, we sing, we shall overcome. We talk about the realization of a dream. When 364 days, African American men and women are living a nightmare. That nightmare was realized just a few hours ago when we watched a man being lynched. It just wasn't with a rope. He was asphyxiated with the knee. But we teach our children in schools that things can't happen like it happened to Emmett Till. But it did happen. It happened with a knee. Have we come as far as we think we've come? Have attitudes changed? Are things really different? Are we the same society that existed in days gone by? Do we have the same police departments? Do we have the same attitudes? The same behaviors that are standing over people making decisions that I'll go out and I'll make a difference, but that difference is not a positive difference. That difference is one that will take a life, that will leave a mother without a son, children without a father. Because of what? A forged check? Because of what? Selling cigarettes on the street? This must stop. Or we need to change the lessons that we're teaching in our school system. Because we're simply preparing to send innocent people to prison. Because the people that aren't going to prison are the ones that really need to go. And that's the ones that take the knee to the throats of men for no reason but to hear them say, I can't breathe. Thank you. Just to the news out, State Representative uh, Regina Goodwin, she's going to come now and uh, say a word and then she will facilitate the rest of those speakers. Thank you, Pastor Blakeney. Uh, can you all hear me okay? All right, good. Um, I just want to say that it was um, what we've seen happening across the nation in terms of the violence, in terms of the uproar, the outrage, as it should be, quite frankly, because as we've said, we've just watched a man be murdered in front of our eyes. And we're saying while Tulsa has been peaceful, while Tulsa has handled these situations differently, I think the city officials should wonder how in the world is that and how much more can people take? And so we've come today to say that, quite frankly, we're going to continue to pray. We're going to continue to sing. We're going to continue to do all the things that we can. But the bottom line is this. At what point would fair-minded white folks step up and say, enough is enough? We've seen all through history that any time there's going to be great social change, it takes everybody working together. And I would say that... Um, it's this time that when you're talking about a George Floyd and clearly it's murder, they were wondering when the cameramen such as yourself and the camera women such as yourself that you come from behind those cameras and then you look from a different lens and you say, guess what? I'm going to speak out. I'm going to see that policies get changed. I'm going to see that the very laws that we were trying to pass just this session as it related to excessive force, that they didn't even get a hearing. The laws that we were trying to pass just this session did not get a hearing when we were trying to say hate crimes should be a felony in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. So what we say is that it's going to take all of us. And at some point, we cannot turn a blind eye to the egregious 
unlawfulness of the very folks that are supposed to protect and serve us. So we talk about Mr. Floyd, and, and I know that you all saw, literally, someone take a knee to his neck and murder him. And I asked, what's the difference between Colin Kaepernick when he just took a knee in silence to say that he was protesting police violence? I'd rather see the knee of a Colin Kaepernick any day that is peaceful, that is trying to communicate with folks, is trying to get a message across, than the officer who was sworn to protect and serve and who used his knee as a murderous weapon. So, you look at Mr. Cooper. He's an avid bird watcher in New York. And a white woman, right, because she has white privilege, she says, I'm going to say that you are assaulting me. And there was nothing in his manner that was offensive. As a matter of fact, she was in the wrong because the dog was not on a leash. And when we can watch her make a phone call and put on her I'm afraid voice, the I'm afraid voice that gets us life in prison, the I'm afraid voice that gets us killed and shot, when we see her do that, what are we going to do as human beings to say enough is enough? To Ms. Cooper, it's not enough for her to just to lose her job. It's not enough for her to say, oh, I'm sorry, I just lost my way. No, it's time for us to say to all of those four police officers that were assisting in that murder, all those officers should be charged with felony murder as any other citizen would be when you're accomplice to a murder. Right. Yes. And that's what we're asking for. We're asking for the right charge, and we're going to ask for a conviction. We're going to ask for that. We're going to ask that in this city, in Tulsa, that's so peaceful today, when other cities are breaking out in mayhem, we're going to ask that this mayor, Office of Independent Monitor, we need to put policies in place that are really going to make sure that we have independent folks looking at this with a very careful eye. We want justice, but more than justice, we just want to breathe. More than justice, we just want to blink. More than justice, we just want to get home to our babies just like everybody else. So we say to everybody, you guys, it's not just about talking about it. You're going to see that we've got policies in place. We've been pushing for laws and measures that can help us get on further and faster. And I would just hope that you all would help us with that. Thank you. From that point, we're going to now bring up our... Um, we're going to bring up Miss Alicia Andrews. She's our chair of our Democratic Party. Hard to see who I am, just my eyes. My name is Alicia Andrews, and I'm the chair of the Oklahoma Democratic Party. And today we're here to talk about George Floyd. I want to talk about the weaponization of black skin because we're here because of George Floyd, but he's just one of many of black Americans, black male Americans particularly, who just because of his skin, he is dead. Because in America, we have a justice system, supposedly, and he did not get the benefit of that. At that time, that officer with his knee on his neck was the judge, jury, and executioner. Mr. Floyd should have been able to have an attorney, go to court, be sentenced, serve his time, if indeed, he committed a crime. I want to talk about the weaponization of black skin because it is, as um, Representative Goodwin said, you know, we talk about Christian Cooper, who was in the right in Central Park bird watching. And Amy Cooper used his black skin. She threatened him with his black skin. I want to talk about Ahmaud Avery. He did something everyone else was doing, but he didn't get to survive it. I want to talk about the lady in Florida, Miss Ripley, who murdered her son and blamed it on two phantom black men. What I'm asking today, as the chair of the Oklahoma Democratic Party, is my call to action is that all of us, not just, we've had a lot of African Americans here speaking today, but it doesn't take just us. What I'm asking is that all of you, when you're out in the world, that you hold everyone accountable. Because who does us in isn't us. Who does us in are the bystanders. Who does us in are the people who are in power. And 
just with you not having black skin, that gives you an inherent amount of power. We are asking that when you see something, say something. When you, you, you need to stand with us because our voices aren't enough. Thank you. I think we've got most of the any other elected officials here. Again, we, we want to thank our elected officials for being with us today and others who come. And I hope as we take away from this that the collective will of our people will be to do better and be better than we are. It's going to take all of us uh, doing our part to make this nation a better nation. Uh, and it starts with you. It starts with me. In just another year or so, we're going to be celebrating the 1921 race massacre in a big kind of way. We, we're still looking at how far removed are we? A hundred years later, when mass graves are still about from murderous people who kill folk because of their color. I submit that it's time for change. Let's make the next hundred years a little bit better than the last ones. And it all starts again with us. Thank you for coming today. And let's work together and make America what it needs to be. Thank you. Thank you. 